We'll call the meeting to order. Thank you for joining us this evening. Mrs. Freed, will you please take roll? Uh, Madam President, all board members are present. Great, thank you very much. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join us. Okay, okay. Go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Moving on to special presentations, our first presenter is going to be Dr. Mr. Williams from the high school. Thank you, Ms. Vandenberger, and um, I am proud to be here uh, once again representing not just Carmel High School, but Carmel Clay Schools and some uh, just amazing presentations to you. Uh, the first one involves our uh, current, some of our current seniors and the ACT score that they, the test that they took last year as juniors. And um, just, just a little bit of a background, the ACT scores, as, as you know, are scores that our colleges use. In fact, all four-year colleges use those to gauge the potential success of students. It's a key score in students' uh, admissions and placement in, in the university. And our ACT scores, which we just got a report for our school, uh, really are very positive dis despite a what's a kind of a national and state trend of, of the ACT scores dropping. Carmel High School scores across the board increased the, this for, for last year, and we're very proud of that. We're also very proud of these four students that I'm going to introduce to you in a minute because they had a lot to do with our scores increasing. And, um, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you how much they had to do. They, in taking the, the ACT, these four students earned a composite score of 36, which is the highest possible score you can, you can earn in taking the ACT. And, and, and that's significant when you think about the statistics. Uh, last year, 1.6 million high school students took the ACT. Out of those 1.6 million, 781 of them earned a perfect score. You think about that a minute, and, and these guys could probably tell you mathematically <laughs> exactly how impressive that is. It's, it's, it's an amazing accomplishment. And we're here to recognize them tonight because certainly it's an individual honor that they should individually be proud of them and their parents, and all their parents are, are here with them tonight. But, but this is also something we're proud of as a district. Um, at least two of these students I know were Carmel second graders on through and a third grader on through. And, I, and uh, so this is something that while I know they are very proud and their family's very proud, we are also as a district very proud of what they've accomplished. And they've worked very hard to do that. And at this time, I'd like to introduce those folks to you. Uh, Courtney Best. Courtney, come on up. And it's our right to applaud individually. <laughs> Hasfa Razi. You guys can stay up here, Chris. <laughs> Patrick Tan. <laughs> Patrick also received a perfect score on his SAT. I just, I, I know that. <clears throat> and Sophia Yin. And again, I know they have parents and relatives and really good friends here with them, so I'd invite them to stand up and also be applauded because this is certainly a team effort. <laughs> Guys, congratulations. This time, if you just walk across the board and shake their hands, that'd be great. I turn it over to Mr. George Giltner to talk about our robotics team. I will say that last year's senior class had seven students who earned a perfect score. So the class of 13 or 14, you've uh, got to get three more at least. 
before the year's out. So uh, not that they're competitive as classes, I would tell you that. But again, congratulations, those folks. This time, I'd like to call one of our teachers, industrial technology teacher, George Giltner, who's also one of our coaches for our robotics team, to introduce to you another outstanding accomplishment at Carmel High School last year. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you for inviting us to the board. Uh, my name is George Giltner. I'm a, a teacher at Carmel High School. As Mr. Williams says, I teach two courses, one called Intro to Engineering Design and the other called Digital Electronics. Uh, our goal at the high school is to really inform students at a young age uh, what the world of engineering is. Our classes are focused in, in, in that department to prepare them for college and expose them to what engineering is. Um, I had the privilege to be the, the coach of the Tech Challenge Robotics team, which, um, in my opinion, is, is one, of the, one of the best things that a student can get involved in if they do want to go into engineering. Um, and I encourage you guys uh, <laughs> to call out meeting September 5th. <laughs> like to see you there. Um, I have, uh, last year was our record high. We had 80 students on the team. What's wonderful about it is it's available to freshmen through seniors, and I tell students and parents that this is a club or, or a team that anyone, freshman through senior, can be uh, or play varsity. Um, anyone can, can emerge as a leader, whether they're elected uh, or appoint, appointed, or they emerge themselves as doing a lot of different uh, things uh, on the team. Uh, I brought uh, four members to kind of talk about four things. One, just a rundown of what we do, what the tech hounds are. Uh, two, what we do in six weeks uh, to build a robot. And then three, we had some really great success last year that we'd like to talk about. Uh, try not to brag, but to talk about. And then fourth, what you guys probably all want to see is our robot. So we have four students here to kind of demonstrate all those. I'm going to hand it over to our co-lead of the entire team of 80, uh, Molly, uh, and our other co-lead is not here, is Blake, but um, it's nice to, to, I think last time we were at the board meeting, um, we had all males, and the board was asking where the females are. Um, Molly is a leader of the entire team, and uh, so I think that stands for, for itself. So Molly, you, you've got the floor. So we have 80 students on our team. We go through six intense weeks of endless nights and afternoons building our robot and getting ready for the competition season in March and April. We have four sub-teams on our teams, robot operations, programming and electrical, auxiliary construction, and public relations. Robot ops, as we like to call it, is the division that actually builds the robot. They prototype it, they CAD it up, they come up with the design, and then they do the actual building with metal and the other materials. Programming and electrical. Programming is the division that makes the code, that makes the robot actually run and move and turn and shoot, and electrical is the one that places all the wires and batteries and whatever it is they are called. I don't know specifically. What are they called, Jacob? Motors, speed controllers, anything that <laughs> need, anything that needs to be powered or controlled. That's what they are called. <laughs> and then auxiliary construction is the division that builds a mock field of the actual field that we'll be competing on for the robot to practice on, on the t in the top left-hand corner. The picture is of a student shooting a frisbee at the goal. The goal this year was, I think, 91 inches off the ground. Really, really tall. And then we have PR, which is our public relations division that deals with shirts and getting sponsorships, the website, all of that. And then I'll hand it over to Jacob for our six-week build season. So as she said, I'm Jacob. Um, I'm here to tell you about what we do in just six weeks' time. Uh-oh. I hit the wrong button. There you go. All right, so uh, just to tell you a little bit about this year's game. So uh, every year we get a new game, and this year our game dealt with Frisbees. It was called Ultimate Ascent. And uh, as you can see, that's the field. I think it's 54 by about 27 feet. Um, you can see that there's 
three goals. Uh, there's a top goal, which is what we aimed for. That's worth three points. Two goals on the side, those are worth two points. And then there's actually a goal on the bottom that was worth one. And then the very top goal on top of the pyramids was worth five. And uh, so three or two teams of three would uh, battle out on that field. So uh, every year after we get uh, introduced the game, uh, we get what's called a kit of parts. And that's basically what uh, they deem is necessary for our robot. And uh, the big thing is, though, we could not build a robot with just the kit of parts we get. Uh, we're constantly getting new things, trying out new things. Um, the kit of parts is just a base kit that we can uh, build off during the season. So uh, after the kickoff, uh, a big part that our uh, teachers like to stress to us is brainstorming. We can't just start building the robot, we have to brainstorm. As you can see, we come up with a fair amount of ideas to choose from, and uh, we kind of go down that list during the season, finding out which ideas are the best. And uh, it, that's like the first big week of the season, is just spent brainstorming, seeing what we want to do in the, in the end. Uh, so after brainstorming, we kind of come up with the main ideas we want to go off of, uh, and that's where we enter our prototype and testing stage, and that can last anywhere from one week to three or four weeks. Uh, this is the major stage where we test uh, what systems are going to work the best, what shooter is going to work the best, what collector is going to work the best, and uh, that's a really exciting time in our season. And then finally, after we've found out what is the best that we can build. Uh, we go on to what's called uh, final construction or final machining, and that is actually building the final robot that's going to go to competition. Uh, and you can see some of the parts being put together there. So uh, what's really cool and what we think is really cool about uh, FIRST as an organization is how many people volunteer. We have about 30 Engi not just engineers, just mentors, period. Some of them are engineers. Um, some of them just love the robotics team. They don't even have kids on the team. They just love to work uh, with us and uh, teach us because they know that we're going to be the future. So uh, without the mentors, we couldn't really do anything. They teach us so much, and uh, they're there as inspiration to us, really. So uh, after we go through our six-week build season, uh, we have to wrap up our robot. We can't touch it anymore after six weeks, and uh, we go to competition. Uh, so as you can see, we have a, a very nice pit. That's where we take our robot once we're uh, done competing to kind of fix it up if anything went wrong. Uh, you can see a few of our pit areas and people looking at it, and uh, obviously we have a very nice and clean pit there. <laughs> uh, here's another picture of our pit. It's not always that clean. <laughs> And then uh, once we get to competition, we unbag our robot. Uh, you can see there we're practicing on the field. We get uh, usually we get like a day to just start practicing on the field, get a feel for since we haven't had the robot in a few weeks, get a feel for uh, if everything's going right. And then uh, we go on and uh, hopefully win a few regionals. You can see there that's uh, well, I'll let someone else talk about that. But uh, after some of our regionals, you can see us celebrating from our uh, successes. And then uh, finally, we go to the national competition. Uh, we don't get to go there every year, so it's really cool when we get to go there. There's actually teams from all over the world that come to compete there. And um, you can see this year, I think the past four years, it's been in uh, Edward Jones Stadium in St. Louis is really cool and we've actually got a bid on it in Indianapolis for uh, the next four years so we'll see if we get that but you can see it's it's really like matches the excitement of a football basketball any type of sporting <coughs> event it's really cool everybody gets really excited they get dressed up and it's a really really cool experience and then uh, here's just a little bit of a highlight video to show you about our robot so as Jacob said, it, it's hard to illustrate the, just the, um, I guess, excitement that is evolved, involved at a competition. You go to a football game, everyone's cheering, screaming. Um, I'm going to take the homecoming football game, and that's how the atmosphere is at a robotics competition because, as Jacob said, people are painting their faces, but they're cheering on a robot. 
that an entire group of students built. And it's, it's pretty wild, it's pretty crazy. Um, we have a short little three minute video here that just shows um, the robot performing. We will demonstrate, but this is just can be an idea. It's a three on three competition. This is uh, uh, a various different um, uh, matches throughout the, uh, throughout the year that what our students put together. So I don't know how the audio is right now. Hopefully it's not too loud. I saw the clouds roll in and run across the sky And I hope that I really hope that That when the sun burns through and I am left to try I know that I think I know that I'll get the glow They'll tell the story of how we took tonight And I will show you that I wear the crown I thought I told you that you can't keep, you can't keep me down Down, 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 down Turn it up Turn it up As you could see from the highlight video, we did really well this season, or last <laughs> season actually. Uh, what's unique about the 2013 season is this was the first year in TechHound's history that we have won two regional, uh, regionals in a row. Uh, however, we didn't win these regionals alone. Um, in the game, we are put onto an alliance of three different teams. So us, along with two other teams, won the regionals. Uh, we won the Boilermaker Regional at Purdue, where we also won the Industrial Design Award. 
We won at the uh, Crossroads Regional, held at Rolls Holman, which was their first year, uh, last year holding it. Um, winning those two regionals then qualified us for the state championship and the international championship. At the Indiana State Championship, we won along with two other teams. And at the 2013 First Robotics International Championship, we finished fourth place in our division. So, we were very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what we'd like to do, and I, I'm, I'm sure everyone wants to see as well, we did bring the robot. It has a name. Its name is Flick, like a Frisbee. We, we tried to master the, the flick of a Frisbee. Um, so we are going to give a little demonstration. We're not going to put at full force or full shot because we could probably put a hole through the walls. <laughs> um, but we're going we're gonna to kind of tone it down a little bit. And you won't see the full speed or the full speed of the, of the shooting. Um, but we'll have Ariman kind of drive it over to me. You we saw in the video, there, there's two ways you can pick up frisbees, either up on the ground or in the human loading spot. And we discussed for several weeks how difficult it is and how to maybe come up with a way to pick up a frisbee off the ground. It's difficult in itself, just with the human hand. And then the obstacle of what if it's upside down, how do you pick it up? And if you do pick it up this way, can you shoot it upside down? So we said, well, I think we can be more consistent. We can be a lot faster if we can do in the human loading slot. You saw there, we are putting four Frisbees, guaranteed four Frisbees in there in less than a second. And that was kind of our goal. And we wanted to get them out of the robot in less than a second. So we were, we we're collecting and shooting in two seconds, which was kind of our goal. So um, are you connected? Yep. Uh, clear? Clear. And I'll just go ahead and demonstrate. Uh, so the human loading, it's, it's so easy. Anyone can do it. You just drop four frisbees in there. The reason why it's four is you're limited to only holding four. If it was more, we'd put 50 in here, and that would be awesome. Uh, but he's going to go ahead and rotate it towards Molly. Oh, that's probably good right there. And then if you want to hear it, this is our low speed. Whenever you're ready. Alright. Now that all four are out, uh, if he puts it to the high speed, okay. well, there's no frisbees in there. <laughs> you put it to the high speed. And you can kind of hear the power of, of how powerful that would be if we had all of the frisbees in there. Jacob would be really upset with me, you feel that. If I didn't demonstrate his LEDs on here, <laughs> you can't see it on there. Jacob, if you can't tell, he's our, our electrical leader. Um, I teach digital electronics. I've never seen a student in the nine years I've been teaching more passionate about electronics. So he does a wonderful job um, with the electrical division. Uh, he used to be one student, and he's recruited almost 10 people now to do the electrical division, which is great. So he's doing a great job. So I, I can't leave without showing off the, the, uh, the LEDs. Would you mind showing the school board, and then I'll show the, the audience really cool, uh, really quick. Um, one thing about the LEDs, other than looking cool, we're going to make, you're going to hear a loud noise. It's going to pop up the, uh, the hanger. So go ahead and pop that up. That's our celebratory lights. We're celebrating <laughs> hanging right now. Um, at the end of the match, if you can hang up on that first bar, you got 10 points. You saw in that last video, if you can climb all the way up to the top, you get 30 points. I told my students, I don't want to work on a robot for six weeks and then watch it fall down. <laughs> so let's just be safe at the low level where we're only inches off the ground. But that was our celebratory. You go ahead and rotate and show our celebration lights. Um, the other thing we have is if you go ahead and lower that and uh, show the school board when you... Uh, another neat thing, and this is helpful for the drivers, what you're going to see is he's going to turn on the wheels, not yet, but when he turns on the wheels, it's going to increase, to the, and that's showing us the RPM to the wheels. When it turns green, that means you can hit the button and shoot. That means it's at the ideal speed for shooting. So if he turns that on, that's good to go. As soon as he's shot, ideally, you'd be losing energy at the speed of the wheels, and you'd have to gain speed when it hits green again, you can hit it again. So go ahead and show the crowd really quick. So if you turn it off and then turn it back on, you can see it increase. And then, of course, it's blue and gold or blue and yellow uh, for caramel. And every time you fire, it does that. Go ahead and show the, the, 
school board every time you fire. Am I missing any? Just driving, but I think everybody okay, saw that. When you that. drive, you can see the RPM as well. You know, you drive to full speed. <laughs> yeah, don't go to so, full speed. <laughs> and then the last thing, what I won't be able to demonstrate is, that, and this is something that's more technical, but it's really a neat accomplishment, I think, that made us successful. Since we were going to go to the human loading station, I wanted a fast robot. Um, we had probably one of the fastest robot out of the 3,500 teams in the world. This travels at about 16 feet per second because we have a two-speed transmission. So in low gear, and a lot of teams don't play with this because it's difficult to accomplish, low gear is a really powerful where we can push teams out of the way, but once we get up to a certain speed, it's an automatic transmission that will automatically switch into high gear, and it, it will just take off. And in the video, some people will put on, we put them on YouTube, people make comments and say, did you guys speed up the video, or is really your robot that fast? <laughs> and and the, the robot's just really that fast. So um, I, I appreciate you guys listening to our spiel, and, and uh, this is our robot. We'll hopefully have another one for you at the end of the year. Oh, the sticker on top Jacob wanted to show right here is number 15. This is like, the, you can only imagine how, I don't know how to say it, um, involved some students get with robotics. There's an underground website, so to speak, of these, I don't know if they really name who they are, but they're Elite 25, it's called, the Elite 25. And then what you do is there's these people that vote for what they think the best robots in the world are. And I've never even heard of this website, and never have we ever made it on the list. And we were anonymously given a sticker to put on a robot that we were ranked 15 on this elite list, which was kind of cool. I just it, the sticker like kind of showed up on a robot, and we're like, "Wow, I think we just got the elite underground website." <laughs> yeah, so that's that's that was kind of a, a, an honor, I suppose. So, so um, is there anything else I missed, guys? Is there anything else you wanted to mention? So uh, we don't know what this year's game is yet. Uh, when we get back from winter break, we'll get the new game and build another robot in six weeks. So. January 4th. Yeah. Okay. Wes, did you, did you, get a question? you know what, George, we do. And we thank all of you for being here. This is so engaging. And I, I know my children have come and toured your, your classroom because they were so excited about what you do. And I know we have board members who would like to say thank you and ask questions as well. I want to thank you very much. I just want to know, would the next one be able to vacuum? Yes. Yeah. yeah you, I, I could provide a testing zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the board? Well, thank you. All I right. do think we have some awards up there. Um, that, okay. <laughs> that Mrs. Cloud is going to to share, and we would love to shake your hands as well. Okay, we are going to take a break for about a couple minutes. We're going to allow the tech hounds to gather their items and and for anybody else who happens to be here for awards or presentations, you are welcome to go home and study or enjoy the last few weeks of sunshine. Um, we will resume in just a couple minutes.
do two or four years. I did two years and then I talked to my counselor and now I did education. So now I teach digital like that. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Yeah, I I have um I want to what I do right now, but I think is is costuming Freshman engineers are doing MET. Everyone's saying it's either MET or ME. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. All right. Is this yours? All right. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Do you have that line? You guys doing good? Okay. Very good, guys. Do you need to take a little bit of time? Do you need to take a little bit of time? Do you need to take a little bit of time? Do you need to take a little bit of time? Do you need to take a little bit of time? We're going to resume because we're all deciding how fast that little robot can go, <laughs> working our own little math calculations. <laughs> so if any of you have a good answer that you just figured out, you feel free to stand up and blurt it out. Um, with that, we're going to move on to consent. Can I get a motion to approve consent? So so moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on. We have action, oh, consent approved. Moving on to action, we have the approval of financial human resource software, Mrs. Cloud. Good evening, I am happy to be here with you again to seek your approval tonight on our recommendation for the financial and human resource software proposal that we brought to you two weeks ago. I believe we've been able to entertain your questions um, via the Google Docs that Dr. Wall has shared with you as well as through email over the last two weeks. So I wanted to remind you of the steps that we've put forth in front of you. Um, we brought to you the presentation last week. We're looking for your approval tonight and then we'll finalize our contract negotiations with the vendor for a potential agreement in mid-September and then we'll kick off the project in October for a final launch in January of 2015. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cloud. Make it a motion to approve. Um, yeah, Mr. Phillips. Second. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Discussion. Well, I just wanted to comment that I do appreciate you bringing forward all of that information. I know we had a number of questions with regard to the financial impact of of this proposal, and um, mm -hmm. you were very quick and efficient and it was very self-explanatory so thank you for coordinating that for us thank you um, if, with that if there's any discussion yes mr. Phillips uh, just a comment uh, I'm very happy to see this proposal I, I personally felt it uh, 
probably should have come some time ago. My hope is that uh, with better software that we'll be uh, better able to, to uh, run a more efficient shop, uh, although I think we do a very good job as it is right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Mrs. Hackett. I, I just have one quick question. Um, during the recommendation, uh, one of the nice things, key things about this New World software is that it um, comes up with, there's continual modification from the company and with the system. Do those suggestions come Will those modifications come during via our suggestions, through CCS suggestions? Do those have to be um, broad enough throughout public school use, let's say, that it's financially feasible for the, them to make the modifications? That's a great question. What the, how the New World System makes um, decisions as to what they're going to include in their product enhancement is based on an advisory group, and they've asked for us to lead that advisory group here in Indiana and actually host that group out of Carmel Clay Schools. So we feel like we'll be very influential in helping formulate and shape the development of that product moving forward. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or discussion? Okay, I think we're ready to take a vote. All in favor of approving a financial human resource software, the New World System, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next, we have the anti-bullying policy 5517.01. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cloud. Thank you. Mr. Dillon has, or Dr. Dillon has had to step away. So, I guess, in general, um, we voted on this policy under emergency, oh, Dr. Dillon is here. Oh, that's okay. As he approaches the board, or approaches the podium, um, we voted to pass 5517.01 under emergency situations. And with that, Dr. Dillon's going Thank to Thank you, Mrs. Spannenberg, very forward. much. Sorry, I was on the phone with one of our administrators. Um, thank you. Uh, as you know, we passed this policy under emergency conditions at our last school board meeting. We did that so that we would be in compliance with Indiana expectations and law. Uh, and this was the policy verbatim that our legal counsel provided us. Um, our bylaws say that at your next regular meeting after your emergency situation, you must pass this on a second reading. There have been no changes at this point that we're bringing forward to you. I am, although, uh, happy to tell you that uh, the Tuesday after your board meeting, the Department of Education released all of their information, their curricular guides. We're all working on those right now. Their policies have all been released. And so our legal counsel sent me, over the weekend, their revised policy. Minimal changes. Their expectations are for us to do nothing with this policy. They feel like the one that we are getting ready to adopt, hopefully, will meet our needs and meet the law. The policy they've sent us for our review has a few tweaks, and we will be working with the policy committee at their next meeting to look at those tweaks and see if those would be a better policy for us. So I bring to you tonight the official second reading of 5517.01 anti-bullying. Thank you very much, Dr. Dillon. You're welcome. May I get a motion? to so moved second second discussion all in favor aye. Aye. aye thank you very much thank you very much moving on to our discussion item we have mr mcmichael thank you um, um at the last meeting we presented what i'd refer to as a report with regard to a possible partnership with the dad's club uh, we had, while well, we had some discussion, um, we now have this item back on the agenda with some more information um, for further discussion. Um, the Dad's Club has, has proposed a partnership with, with the schools or an expansion of our partnership, uh, which would include and involve the um, installation of artificial turf on one of our two practi three practice fields, actually, at Carmel High School, conditioned on the school corporation installing artificial turf on a second practice field. Uh, we've estimated that the cost of this um, offer uh, is estimated at around $700,000. Um, it's worth noting that the, the, the administration intended to ins and, and intends to recommend uh, replacing the artificial turf in 2014 on the football field and also installing artificial turf on Murray Soccer Stadium. We would very much have liked to uh, recommend in, uh, putting artificial turf on two practice fields. 
Uh, we did not plan to do that um, for 2014, uh, but with this proposal, uh, we would be very much in favor of, of proceeding to do that. Uh, it's something that, that we've, we've talked about internally at least and, uh, for a number of years, and I've at least on one or two occasions have mentioned to the school board that it would be very beneficial to us if we had more artificial turf, at the, particularly at the high school. Uh, and in fact, we would see some really advantages to having one field at, even at the, at the middle schools as well. So we think the uh, partnership would, would be a very good one. Uh, included in your packet is, is a letter of intent um, that essentially outlines the, the, the uh, overall intent of the, um, of the partnership. Uh, what we would like to do, if we sense a, a feeling of, of possible support by the school board, would be to, at a future meeting, we would actually have a, a document that would, um, that would, would in, in detail specific, you know, um, relate what the, what the um, uh, relationship would be, uh, something more akin to what we currently have with our management agreement with, with the Dads Club. But there's no, there's no immediate need to actually take a vote uh, on that um, at this point in time, and, and we thought appropriate to, to not um, ask for action this evening, but we would, would um, encourage the board to con con continue to uh, consider this possibility. Thank you very much, Roger. I ask fellow board members if you have questions or items that you'd like to discuss. Mrs. Knowles? Uh, yes, um, Roger, when we do this work, uh, are we going to be going with the original company who did the work on the field in the first place, or are we going to go for, uh, out for bids? We'll go out for bids. Okay. Um, and so um, we wouldn't have any way of knowing who, who we would recommend at this point. There will be uh, several different companies that would be interested, very interested in this project. Um, and, and one thing I failed to mention was is that we would be hopeful that, and certainly expect that there would be some um, uh, financial benefit in addition to the to the contribution from the dad's club of doing the volume of work that That's we're doing will, will right. really attract attention and and we believe we'll get very very competitive pricing okay that was my next question and my other question in the letter it says uh, if CCS decided to permit use of the fields for purposes other than school purposes mm -hmm. I'm assuming if we're partnership if we have partnership with dad's club that that would be the intent of one of the fields yeah I, what yes what this is saying is something similar to what we have in the, in our um, agreement with the dad's club for other fields and essentially if we we are not using the field the dad's club's not using the field and there was an, a, another party that would be interested in using the field that we this is al allowing for that consideration okay that's what the that one sentence yes. refers to okay thank you mr phillips thank you uh, I, we had a, a long and fruitful relationship with the carmel dad's club this worked very well for the schools and for the community and of course, Carmel Dance Club is the most prominent uh, sports organization in the community. But there are other uh, sports organizations. So my question, Roger, would be, uh, would this partnership uh, allow other community organizations to take advantage of these facilities or, or would it be exclusively for the use of the Carmel Dance Club when the school's not using it? they would have first use of it so uh, which is what our existing agreements have um, with all kinds of all of our most of our fields um, as well as our uh, basketball courts for example uh, as a practical matter by the time the school um, uses by the time the facilities are used by the school and the dad's club there's there's very limited if any time available uh, because of the the uh, uh, not the lack of fields but but we certainly don't have excess fields and and so so the scheduling is so tight that 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 there's not a lot of, of room outside of that schedule so it doesn't prohibit it for uh, example i would give is is the, the lacrosse program for example uh, has occasion to use a couple of fields now we don't we don't make available for example our varsity baseball field um, and but and so most of our f fields are not even on our uh, rental schedule or availability schedule but but um, but there are some exceptions to that um, and so 
for example, right now the, the Dad's Club has a relationship with Carmel United Soccer. And so they regularly use the soccer fields along with the Dad's Club. But their relationship is with the Dad's Club, our, relationship, our relationships with the Dad's Club, and theirs is too. So they don't come to us. They go to the Dad's Club as a part of our management agreement. And effectively what the Dad's Club is saying is that the school does not need the field, the Dad's Club does not need the field, or more likely they've, they've reached consensus on when, they, when each party, each organization would use the field. And then thus Carmel United Soccer uses, uses our soccer fields. Um, and so that's, that's how our program has worked for ever, you know, 50 years, I think, so, <laughs> or more. Um, okay. Other questions? My question, and it, it basically Pam's question as well, do you have a sense of the financial savings of doing all of these fields at once, the bulk purchase rather than doing two one year and two the next year? I, I would just be guessing that, but um, it's it's rare that that there's an organization that that's going to do multiple fields, either has multiple fields, so that thus they're they're not seeing very many opportunities to do multiple fields, uh, unless it's a, a an original facility being built like the Westfield complex, for example. And even that's you know kind of you don't see very many of those in the in the higher United States. But from a construction standpoint, what I do, what I know for sure is is that there there are significant costs associated with with bidding, with mobilization of, of resources and, and equipment and so forth. So while you have uh, all the equipment there, um, and for example, if you're doing one practice field and there's two more right next to it and you're needing to grade the, grade the site, a good deal of what the cost to grade that site with the equipment and so forth, you're going to bring that whether you're doing one field or two fields. And so um, alone just the sheer you know dollar volume so and so forth so so I would believe we would get get a a, a material discount now I, I hesitate to say whether I think it would be you know five or ten or twenty percent um, but certainly in just in conversation with vendors um, they will make it very clear that that um, it would be financial financially beneficial to the community to do more and so in this case we're talking about um, or we would hope to do it too, the, the original field and the, and the Murray Stadium. So here we'd be talking about doubling that number. And, and so on the other hand, if we, if we don't proceed with this, then in the future we may find ourselves wanting to do two, first paying for the second one in, instead of just paying for one and losing that volume discount. So I think with, with the estimated cost, um, and these estimates are based on, on information that, that I've asked through our architectural firm and so forth, uh, of $700,000 plus whatever number you want to add for, for quantity discount. I think it's a really significant uh, opportunity for our taxpayers and, and for the school district. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Thank you very much. We will move on to reports, Roger, and we'll let you present the budget. Thank you. I might need to wait a while until the, my audience, they might be running a little bit late, I'm not sure, <laughs> but, but I'll, I'll get ready here. We'll give them 30 seconds. Okay. Get that. Oh, there we go. Okay, this cover page might be the most exciting part, so I want you to notice that it does have movement and things and, and to get your attention. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> well, let me begin by, by noting that our budget uh, is made up of seven different funds. Oftentimes, in, in, the, in general conversation, when people are referring to the school corporation's budget, they're really, in many times, talking about our general fund or, our, or in our case, the general fund and our referendum fund. Um, and so, but we actually have seven funds, um, most of which, used to be all of which were uh, 
uh, supported by property taxes either entirely or partially. Uh, however, that has changed as the board knows. And so we, we now have our general fund, which is our general operating fund. And, and we're fortunate enough to also have a referendum fund, which is really additional operating funds. So we, we essentially combine those in presentations because both funds are used for generally the same purposes. They are, from an accounting standpoint, they are definitely kept separate as required by statute. Uh, and so both of those, uh, the general fund is now supported by the state, uh, state revenues, uh, essentially income tax and sales tax. And, and the referendum fund, on the other hand, is, is essentially 100% supported by local funds, primarily property tax, as is all the other funds are supported uh, from property taxes. And so we, then we have our transportation fund for the general day-to-day -day operation of the, of the, of tr for transportation. The bus replacement fund, as the name implies, provides for the, the buses for the, the transportation. A debt service fund is used to repay our debt. And, and then we have a pension fund, which is really a form of debt service. It is a debt service. We have a, a bond uh, that we'll pay off this year um, that we, we sold to fund a pension program. Um, and then we have our capital projects fund, which is used for uh, building repairs, uh, but also it, is where virtually all of our technology comes from, for example. So, so a significant portion of that budget is, is used for other capital expenses such as technology. So I'll start then with some assumptions relative to our general fund. Um, and with re again, with regard to revenue for our general fund, it does come from the, the basic grant from the state. Um, the revenue numbers uh, in this proposed budget are based on an on a, uh, enrollment decline of 46 students, which and that number comes from our, our uh, latest demographic study. Uh, I should note that our current counts for student are, are uh, more positive than that. We, we're currently showing uh, uh, some additional enrollment for students. Um, it's not unusual between now and, and by the time the, the uh, official count takes place in mid-September that, that our enrollment will decline from where it's at now. Um, but we're we're hopeful, if not, and certainly optimistic that that the the count may be better than than what we're showing here. I didn't, however, want to just pick another number, uh, so I stuck with a, an identifiable number that that is based on our demographic study. But but it is worth noting that that um, each student does make a difference, about five thousand dollars per student. So so. Uh, um, it, you know, that enrollment becomes a very integral part of, of our funding. With regard to expenditures in the general fund, in terms of the, the major categories under salaries, this budget assumes a 1% increase in the salary schedules, uh, plus either an increment or the equivalent of an increment. Um, and so, and uh, for 13-14, for, uh, and, and, and some of those, um, for some employee groups, um, the board's already taken the action that reflects this. Um, and then for 2014-15, um, I've assumed no increases. And again, not because I'm, I, I'm predicting what the board may or may not do, but since I don't know, I'm choos choosing for purposes of budgeting to just not make any assumption and, and keep that at zero. Um, with regard to um, benefits, we, we know already that our health and dental insurance premiums will not increase for 2013-14, uh, uh, and I've projected a 5% increase for 2015. Um, I've also assumed a, a, a contribution for employees that choose our high deductible insurance plan of, of $1,000 if they choose if they, for a single plan and $2,000 uh, for a family plan. Again, the board's taken um, already approved this. Uh, for some of our employees. Uh, with regard to non-personnel expenses then, uh, such as property insurance and so forth, uh, those, those are based on, on the various trends in, in those areas. And then the so-called controllable costs, such as supplies and travel, um, this budget reflects no increase uh, over 2013. Then again, with summary of our revenue, you can see property tax for the referendum is a little over $12.5 million. Um, that's the only significant property tax um, we have for the general fund and the referendum fund, and, and it's only for the referendum fund. 
and then uh, you can see our basic grant for the general fund is, is um, $82.8 million uh, for a total um, general fund and referendum fund revenue of $99,135,910. Uh, With regard to appropriations, um, you can see that our, our, our salary costs for these funds are uh, 72.5 percent and the benefit cost is 22 percent so so we're in our operational funds we spend over 94 percent of every dollar on salary and benefits so that's really where the money's at you might say um, and then we 3.3 percent for purchase services um, and, and a, a big piece of that is utilities as you can see here and the utility numbers here um, reflect only a part of our cost. This is the total cost for the general fund and the referendum fund, but $2.5 million of our utilities are paid from our capital projects fund as is as, as permitted by statute. However, that number is is uh, frozen and has been, been the same for, uh, I believe, about three years or four, uh, which means that any increase in our utilities, that the increase all falls to, to the general fund. And so, um, and then we have 2% in supplies and materials. Um, and so this entire budget for 2014 uh, is $102,316,800. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you compare that to 2012 as an actual expenditure, uh, we're up about 3%, um, and that, and which is for two, over two years really isn't isn't particularly a, a great increase, uh, particularly when you consider that that close to a million dollars of that number in 2014 is that assumed contra uh, possible contribution to the to the health savings account, um, and so that's not uh, assumed to be a recurring expense. Um, but that so so if you if you well, I'm sorry if you if you factor that out you'll see about a three percent increase, and so so. Um, uh, it, considering inflation and cost of utilities and so forth, 3% increase over two years isn't bad um, or to be unexpected. However, uh, when you see the revenue, um, you'll see that, that uh, it does present some concerns because unfortunately our revenue uh, being provided to us is not keeping up even with a, an average of 1.5% a year. Uh, so, so you can see here then in the summary, that our cash balance on, on January 1, 2013 was, was $14.4 million. Um, and we're projecting with these assumptions that our cash balance at the end of this year will be 11.3. So, so we're, we're showing a decline. And part of this was there, there is an intent on the board to, to utilize some cash balance for things such as the, the health savings account. And so, so, um, um, some of this is well. All of this is planned, I suppose, but 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 there's an understanding that that it's not all a recurring kind of of increase. Um, and then for 2014, um, we it, our balance is projected to continue to drop uh, down to about eight million dollars. And so over the course of two years, we're going from 14.5 almost uh, and projecting down to eight. Again, again there are. Uh, this isn't a surprise, um, but it is something that we'll need to keep an eye on and, and certainly be aware of, um, as, as obviously we couldn't, couldn't continue this, uh, I mean, uh, only to the point where we would end up with zero cash. And, and, um, and so $8 million is, is uh, still a, a, a stable condition in terms of uh, the amount of money in relationship to a $102 million budget. Um, in fact, it's, a, it's about the, which, about 8%, which is, is the percentage that the state agencies recommend as a minimum that, that school districts maintain. Uh, so we're not dropping below that recommended minimum, uh, but it is something we'll want to keep an eye on. Then uh, going to the transportation fund, uh, again, the... Um, same approach for, for the revenue. Or this is 100% supported with local um, taxes, uh, primarily property tax, and um, there is a formula that, that uh, so that this is not a fund that we can raise unlimited amounts of money. It does have a, a formula cap on it. 
and um, we're also getting some money then from excise tax. Um, get rid of this. Uh, and financial institutions tax. Uh, we made similar assumptions with regard to salary and, and non-personnel expenses. Um, and again, going through our, our cash balances, um, we show a decline in cash balance. Um, I would not expect a decline quite that much. When, anytime we're building a budget, we're, we're using some level of conservatism because I certainly don't want to give you a budget and then find out that our expenses were a lot greater than that. Um, so it's, it's, it's generally reflective of what, what I believe will, will be the case. Um, but if we're erring, I would tend to err on the conservative side, of, of which means that we may, may not spend as much versus the other way around. So we're, 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 this, is, this is indicative of a, a, a very healthy position in our transportation fund. And, and we're very fortunate to, to have this picture. Uh, as you know, many districts around the state are having great difficulty. Uh, with their uh, pro uh, property tax supported funds uh, such as transportation with with such things as a circuit breaker and so forth uh, they're finding it very difficult to uh, to uh, maintain these services at the level that that they've had uh, fortunately for us um, at this point we we're in, continue to be in very solid financial condition with regard to the best re bus replacement fund, this is a relatively small fund. Uh, revenues, again, are based on our, our latest estimates, uh, and this is based on replacing 18 buses. And, and we are on a 12-year um, replacement cycle, by the way. Um, and again, this is the, the uh, revenue. We, we carry a, a relatively small cash balance in this fund. Um, but but nothing of any real significance, and you can see that the uh, the fund is ab about 1.5 million dollars a year. With regard to our our debt service and pension funds, you can see that we have uh, five currently five bonds. As I stated earlier, the pension bond uh, will be paid off this year, and then we'll have four um, debt uh, b bond issues that we're paying debt service on. Um, and you can see the respective uh, uh, issued dates uh, on these funds. Uh, with regard, again, to balances, um, we're showing just a, a relatively minimal uh, cash balance in our debt service fund. Um, um, part of this, this is the fund that, that we, on two, two occasions, I believe, or at, at the most three, we've had occasion to, to use some cash balance from this fund to move to the rainy day fund um, we the current position on the state is such that that um, <clears throat> we will not be able to continue to do that even if we had we don't anticipate the need to do that but even if we did um, the, the state now has made it very clear that they will not allow that so there's there's a change in that regard that um, that would prohibit uh, districts from from moving its its um, unencumbered cash balance uh, to, to the rainy day fund. Now with regard to our, our capital projects fund, uh, there's some information here, uh, just some background information is, of course, the board is aware that we have 11 elementary schools, three middle schools, a high school, two transportation facilities, this building, and a Carmel Life and Learning Center across from Carmel High School. We have about uh, almost 3 million square feet of space and a little over 700 acres of property uh, with, an, with an insured value of $424 million. Um, by statute, um, we must establish a three-year capital projects fund plan. Um, and then that plan must be uh, at maximum, must, must cannot exceed the maximum money that that we're permitted to raise and that and the maximum uh, or the control if you will for the capital projects fund is a tax rate and I've noted here that our our uh, maximum tax rates um, almost 23 cents um, which has uh, generated a, a, a maximum levy of just over 14 and a half million dollars now we also get 
excise tax and so forth and so-called miscellaneous revenue that goes into this fund so the total amount annually is a bit more than this about 10 percent more um, <clears throat> so and I always stress that well we have to we're required to have a three-year plan the first year is is which in this case would be 2014 that is a year that we're actually whatever our plan is that's going to be reflected in the tax rate so so um, um, like any plan the second and third year you know may change uh, and the first year can change but but the difference is is you are taxing now uh, f that re a tax rate and so forth that reflects your plan and so you, while you can change and amend your plan um, um, you are at least at this point in time giving the public an indication of what at least today you would intend to do next year and you're taxing them uh, uh, money to do that so so that first year is the most significant year in my view of the three years um, with regard to revenues again uh, we've used the latest information that we have um, and we're projecting this at, at right around just about 16.5 million each of the next three years um, and that's because we're not assuming any significant change in the assessed value if our assessed good or bad and unfortunately in the last three years our assessed value has gone down not up and with a tax since the tax rates the same when it goes down we receive less revenue and likewise if it goes up we'll receive more so I of course would would hope that the the uh, assessed value would go up uh, because that would generate more money for the school district but but it would not increase the tax rate to in terms of what the taxpayer is paying um, their, in terms of the rate that they're paying um, again we're showing um, we have no really need to maintain an operating balance here nor can we really and th just the way the plans put together we're showing um, uh, zero cash balance at the end of, of 2014 um, because the approach that I take is to to assume that whatever revenue we've taxed for that we will plan to use it either ha actually sp spend it or have it encumbered and and um, at the end of the year we we won't literally have spent all the money but we very well would have it have it encumbered for a specific project um, within the cat the, the three-year plan then uh, I'm noting here what, what I'd consider to be the the major projects for 2014 uh, it's not been too long ago that major projects would mean a new elementary school or or something not not that this is insignificant but but the the definition of major for us is a little less than it than it was when we were building schools every year um, so and, and now this this reflects as you can see it reflects the the turf projects that we spoke about at the high school also accounts for or assumes a, a million dollars for flooring and finishes at the high school um, and the flooring and finishes include areas in the high school uh, we have about five million dollars that's that's coming due to replace carpeting and flooring and paint and so forth uh, a good it's a, it's the work that was done in the 90s um, and and most of it was completed in in the mid or late 90s and so you know now in 2014 15 and 16 those areas are coming due to be be replaced and so um, we do not want to disrupt the school program by trying to do four or five million dollars all at once because we couldn't possibly do that during the summer and so we think the better strategy is is to attack that uh, do as much as we reasonably can during the summer uh, and and try not to have that spill over into the school year um, sometimes as the board knows if we're doing a major renovation of a school we can't can't get it done in the summer so so we have to you know kind of live in a construction uh, environment and Kathy in particular spent probably 10 years of her career at the high school uh, under construction and and um, so we're, we, we try to avoid that when we can and so so um, you'll see work being for finishes being done at the high school I think you'll see it in the in the next year as well um, because we, we keep in mind that about a third of our school districts is Carmel High School so so if you see it's like we do a lot of work at Carmel High School it's because it's it's um, you know it's a million square feet of space uh, and by the way um, this isn't trying to to predetermine what your action will be on the, on the discussion with the partnership with the dad's club it's the, the timing is such that that we needed to get 
at least started on the discussion with the Dad's Club proposal, um, but also the timing here is such that we have to start this process in order to be finished um, in the time frame that's required by the statute. So um, just as we're not asking to vote on the Dad's Club, I'm not asking for your vote here either. Now eventually I will in both cases, um, but, in, but I'd want the board and the public to understand that, that um, you are taking a step closer uh, if you don't, you know, totally reject, you know, what we're doing here. But it, but until we're awarding bids, you know, you haven't committed to doing anything, and really, and so, uh, not not finally, and so so. Uh, this is here because I could either assume that we're going to do turf, or I could assume that we're not going to do turf, and then we would do something else. And so, um, between the two, I ch I chose to take this path, and if 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 that doesn't turn out, then then we would do an amendment to our to our plan and do something else uh, such as as finishes because we we know that we have um, work to do at the high school that would warrant the tax rate and and, re and requesting the money and so forth um, in 2015 um, we're, we're, this plan anticipates uh, doing flooring and finishes at Town Meadow Elementary School. That building was opened in, in the year 2000, uh, so this is 15 years out. Um, our approach in Carmel Schools on facilities is uh, we 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 just we know that the carpeting, for example, will not last 30 years, at least not in a condition that would anywhere close meet our standards, and so so. It, to the extent that we know but somewhere in that life cycle between now and 30 years when we would generally believe that the building will be due for a major renovation. Um, we don't think the carpet can, can last that long so our approach has been to to replace it in, in somewhere in that mid cycle of that um, which means that when we replace it it won't look that bad and we have people say well why the carpet doesn't look that bad why are you replacing it. And my answer to them is, is it's a little bit like my car. If you ever, ever had a car and, and the tires got so bad that you had to put a new set of tires on it and then you sold it six months later. So you would might as well put them on earlier because you were going to put a set of tires on it before, you know, before the end. And, and we're going to replace carpets so we could either do it kind of that mid cycle of that 30 year cycle or we could wait until it's just horrible and then we'll replace it and then maybe five years later the, the whole building will need renovated and we'll, we will not have gotten a useful life out of that one-time replacement. So we, that's kind of the approach that we've taken and, and I think it's worked pr pretty well for us. Um, in 2016, the third year of the plan, we're showing one and a half million dollars to replace the roof at Mohawk Trails. We, we can see that that's coming up uh, and again another million dollars for um, uh, flooring and finishes at, at Carmel High School. I thought there was a couple more slides, but if there are, I don't see them. Okay, with that, I'll stop and, and uh, respond to questions that you might have. Thank you, Roger. Um, just want to share with the board, I do have a budget schedule that I will be sharing with everybody um, yes, and sending an email to everyone. We will not officially be voting on the budget until October, October 28th to be exact. Um, and there's a, a series of other points in there. Frederick wants to touch on those. Yes, after this meeting there will be, uh, we, we will advertise two times in the, in the, uh, for, that we will be holding a public hearing with regard to the budget uh, because the public is entitled to to uh, comment on the, on the proposed budget, and, um, uh, and they do they have that opportunity in a public session, uh, so that we will do that next, um, and then sometime uh, I don't have the date in front of me, but there it is. Um, af after that, uh, those advertisements in the public hearing, we'll have actually a hearing on on the budgets and also a hearing on the CPF plan. They both kind of go along together. Um, and then um, on October the 28th, uh, we'll ask ultimately for the, on that date for the board to adopt the 2014 budgets and the uh, bus replacement plan and the capital projects fund plan. And then um, uh, after that, the, 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 the process is, is we submit that information to the county auditor. 
um, and sometime between uh, November and December, um, the budgets are reviewed by the Department of Local Government Finance, and then in, in at the first of the year, it used to be January, but sometimes it's now maybe February or so, um, those, those tax rates and, and budgets will be certified and approved by the Department of Local Government Finance, and it's at that time that we, we actually have approved 2014 uh, budgets and, and these other related plans. And so uh, those plans and budgets require your approval, but also require state approval. Um, and, um, and then we, we, they're set for calendar year 2014. Great, thank you very much. Um, I do have a few questions that I'm going to just get out there and then um, I will entertain additional questions from our board. One new thing that you just pointed out, um, the shift of the rainy day fund that the, the state no longer allows us to mm -hmm. use a debt service pension plan. Um, what are they suggesting that we use to build a rainy day fund? Well, <coughs> the, um, I don't know there's a short answer, but um, I can tell you what the statute says, and that is that um, with regard to revenue for the Rainy Day Fund, it says something very close to this. It says that you may transfer unused and unneeded and unencumbered, thus, funds to the Rainy Day Fund. And, and the statute really doesn't say except the debt service fund. Um, so I'll... I would say that the, the, the fund that's probably m transferred the most funds that are transferred the most are, are tip I would say, from school districts come from the capital projects fund. You develop a plan. Um, you're talk if you're talking about a construction project, of course, you don't know exactly, you know, what the final bids and so forth would be. So, so at the end of the year, you may have funds remaining if, if, if your bids were good and so forth. And so you have the potential to transfer those funds to the rainy day fund. Um, and so in previous years, we, we had, as I said, I think three occasions where we, we were, you're also permitted to carry a six month operating balance in the debt service fund. So that's another statute. And so when, when, the, when we had a almost $4 million state shortfall uh, in, I believe, 2010, that's when Carmel Schools for the first time established a rainy day fund and for the first time thus transferred revenue to it and we we chose to use our uh, a portion of that six month debt service uh, operating balance because it was I believed that it was unneeded and it certainly was unencumbered because it was not we had money to pay all of our debt payments and so it, it certainly seemed to me that it met the definition of, of unneeded and unencumbered um, however, and we, and we did that three times, and, and um, mo most recently then the position of, of the, and you know we've had some issues with, with it seems that the interpretation of things changes from maybe one year to the next. So, so most recently the, the position taken by the Department of Government Finance was is that, that it, they specifically excluded the, the uh, debt for service fund or those, that six month operating balance. And they took the position this very this year in 2013, um, because that was this was the third. We we just did this in 2013. I believe a million dollars. Uh, it was partially to offset the the changes that were made in the the uh, how they how the state administered our pension bond neutralization. So so when they approved our budget for 2013, they took the position that the money that the board approved transferring. They, tr they did not treat it as a transfer, they, they treated it as a temporary loan. And, and without giving you more information you want to hear, um, by doing that, it basically lowered the amount of that six month operating balance equal to whatever we had transferred. That they treated it like a loan as though we were going to put it back. And so, so it, it effectively, you know, if you transfer three times, we're, we're what started out a, a, a authority to have a nine-month balance was now down to a million dollars, and and um, and and that's the first thing they did. Then the second thing was they eventually then came out and said, "You just can't do this." Period. So that's where we're at now. Um, uh, I don't anticipate. I don't. I'm not aware of anything that would anticipate that. But then I didn't have any awareness that we'd have a four million dollars shortfall from the state. 
Uh, so, so now none of us can predict the future, but um, but that clearly at the moment that that limits that there's a limitation there that wasn't there previously. Okay. And my second question is, our board is very much in support of technology and mm -hmm. technology resources in the classroom, and and we'll be having a new superintendent coming on board, and we've yet to establish some. You know, we we really don't know the vision. So we look forward to hearing that, but should we have some big initiative after we've already voted on this plan, mm -hmm. what is the protocol for us to follow to change the capital project fund plan um, with the state? I know we can make an amendment, but is there anything more that we have to do statewide? Well, <clears throat> you can make an amendment. However, you can't, there are limitations to what you can amend, and I don't, have, I'm not sure I can re recite that from the top of my head, but but there are the the plan is set up in the various categories, such as as property and and repair and renovation of buildings and and equipment and and so forth, and it's done by location. So so you you we could be limited in terms of making an amendment. You can, in other words, you can't you cannot just make any amendment imaginable, but but within the within the um, what's permitted you can amend the plan and, and the amendment of the plan is much like establishing the plan in the first place you have to advertise that you're going you're proposing an amendment you have to have a public hearing it's like you do when you adopt the plan and, and basically you kind of start that process over in terms of giving the public an opportunity to, to respond to whatever your proposed amendment would be so there's that process and then like the budget you send it off to be approved now if you're not trying to amend if you're as long as you're amending something that's within the within the statute uh, a category that's within the st statute and you haven't had major public outcry to where where they may want to have a, a hearing with the state people then it becomes it's pretty routine at that point um, so that the process looks a whole lot like this process will look in terms of, of establishing the budget in the first place thank you very much questions from the board Mrs. Freed? So this is a new process for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll probably have many more questions that I'll send you. But I was just looking through the, like the itemized things. And so for business education, I noticed in 2012 to 2013 budget, there's a $50,000 drop. And then there's a $150,000 increase in the high school business education certified salaries. Are we expecting? Are you, you're looking at? The thick document or the document, the big thick document. Yeah. Okay. I mean, are those, as you you presented here, the large certified salaries? All those pool together to be the big certified salaries. That's they are <laughs> yes. They're all broken down. Yes, and they, and when when we talk about salaries, recognizing that that for the same position, you know, we we up to now at least we have we have paid on what we refer to as an incremental salary schedule so that there can be a wide difference between uh, a teacher for example at the top of our salary schedule and and, an, and a new teacher coming in so in some of these relatively smaller areas if you were talking about elementary teachers where you, you're looking at millions of dollars it, it kind of balances out but in a smaller area, if you have if you have two teachers and or one and and that teacher has been at the top of the salary schedule retires and then you you hire a replacement at the at the low end of the salary schedule can make a significant difference i don't know that that's the case there without doing a little more research but 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 in in salaries it can vary uh simply because of the turnover in staff uh, from from one year to the next now we've got a number of things by the way that that i should i didn't point out earlier but one would be as you the board knows that that we're no longer participating in the in a in a special ed co-op, and so so uh, when we were we had what was referred to as a transfer payment. It was our payment, our our share of the cost for that that uh, to participate in that cooperative, and that was about two and a half million dollars a year. When we when we we still have the two and a half million dollars worth of expense, except now it's categorized under salaries and benefits, like other personnel rather than a rather than a flat transfer payment and so that has the impact of that is it's it's increasing our salary and benefit cost on the one hand on the other hand if you look in the detail here you'll see we no longer have a transfer payment uh, for the special ed cooperative so there's a number of things uh, going on kind of inside all these large numbers 
What is professional services? Professional services is is uh, an example would be is if 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 you hire a con a consultant, that's professional services. Uh, legal fees are professional services. So it's 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 generally contracted types of of uh, services that that um, um, and generally you're talking about personnel of some sort. Uh, in a general context, it's a, some form of a consultant kind of thing. But the consultant would include things like attorney fees and 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 literally you know professional development. If you brought somebody in for to, to provide some professional development, for example, all that would be coded as as uh, professional services. Roger, I know that in the capital projects fund that you've given us just the major mm -hmm. projects. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about in terms of capital project Absolutely. funding. Uh, a great deal of which uh, is dedicated to some fairly routine things like the salaries of IT personnel. And I think uh, a large chunk of funds goes toward utility bills. I guess what I what I would like to see at, at some point would be a, just a little bit more of uh, detail as to how how you, some you of those see major categories all, all of that uh, breaking down. And my my ultimate interest is knowing how much discretionary money is there to uh, pursue other things. Uh, nothing of the magnitude of, of uh, a million dollars, mm -hmm. uh, but you know smaller change things. In the in the actually it's the very last page of the what we call the budget guide the thick document that you have um, there's a there's a there is some breakdown there that it, it may not quite address what what you're um, looking for but you'll see some it, in that 16.8 million dollars you'll see um, seven million of it for example is shown up under uh, under building acquisition construction improvement that's that's everything from the the uh, major projects that I've identified to the day-to-day -day maintenance of facilities um, and you'll see um, under uh, uh, utilities is, is the 2.5 million dollars for utilities that one's that's pretty straightforward um, and then four four point six million for maintenance of equipment so it's got kind of the big categories that the state says these are the major you know how we how we handle the accounting um, what you cannot ex extrapolate from this is well, how much do we spend on technology for example well the answer is over four million dollars of this uh, but you couldn't find that in these numbers you you would have to uh, have more detail than, than what's provided here Go ahead, Mrs. Niles. Uh, yes, um, I noticed in 2016 we're planning to replace uh, Mohawk Trail's roof. I know there are some other roofs that um, have been having some difficulty, and I can't remember at this point in time which ones we've replaced up to now. Well, given the age of our buildings, of course, some of them are the many of them are the original roof. The the, the major work that we did in in starting in about 2000 with the uh, Creekside, for example, was built in 2004. So, of course, it's you know under the major roof. But but the roofs that we have replaced um, as separate projects, of, we have replaced uh, both Cherry Tree and Smoky Row. As, as some of you know, both of those buildings were built off the same floor plans and had the same type of roof system, which was a standing what they call standing metal seam roof. And so we had difficulty with those roofs leaking um, excessively um, over a good part of the time that the, from the time the building was built. So both of those have been been replaced. Other roofs have been um, been replaced as a part of of a major renovation. Uh, Mohawk, however, the when that building had a major renovation in the mid '90s, uh, we did not replace the original roof. However, it had additions, so it's got it's got additions that were built in the mid 90s that, that that of course the roof was new at that time but then the original building portions have the original roof and I think that building was built in 79 if I remember right but but um, uh, and so to, an to answer your question would be those two elementary schools in particular Okay. and are we locked into what you have proposed as um, our capital projects um, plan 
for 2014, 2015, and 2016 at this time? Or is there a possibility to change that before it becomes advertised? Oh, I see. I was, I was going on down a different track. <laughs> um, we, we, sh we have the first advertisement on September the 12th. So the answer is yes, it could be changed prior to that first advertisement. Um, but it would need to be pretty quick, which means that the board would need to call a spatial meeting in order to act to, to make a change prior to the ad. Um, but it could be changed before the 12th. But you don't have, obviously, much time given this is, the, what, the 26th, I think, so. Additional questions? And this will be coming back to us on the 9th for additional discussion. Is that not right? Is that correct? Yes. September 9th? Okay. Yes. So we will have other opportunities, and we can continue to email and question and get additional information. Greg had requested some um, okay. more detailed itemization of the CPF fund and perhaps what discretionary funds are still there after everything has been accounted for. So um, Dr. Wall and you can continue to perhaps provide that to us. Yes. Thank you very much. Welcome. With that, reports. Do we have a board, any board member interested in sharing information this evening? Okay. Um, announcements. Our big announcement, I suppose, is that we will have a special session this upcoming Wednesday at 6.45 in the morning. You are welcome to rise and shine and join us. We will be taking action on the superintendent's contract. Any other information that, okay, with that, anyone like to motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> <laughs>